Okay. He shows up uh, as the little swirly thing. Just saw that, yes. Okay, well, I guess we will get started. We'll call to order the August 6th, 2020 meeting of <clears throat> online meeting of the Board of Zoning Adjustments. Um, we can go ahead and call roll. Ms. Smith? I think you need to, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. LaBeouf? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. Mr. Jarman? Here. Mr. Foley? Mr. Roberts? Mr. Gear? Here. All right, thank you. Um, all right, well, I guess we'll start with uh, introducing Mr. Gear to the BZA. It's his first night, and we welcome him. And we did the due to Mr. Marlin, but I'm sure you will do a wonderful job. Uh, Thanks, Brian. You're very welcome. Okay. Um, hey, John, long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any communications from the vice chair? None. None. Okay. Um, we will move on to the first case, which will be in the old business category, which is uh, SV 20-07-03 at 1600 Beckham Drive. And since our last meeting, we have had some new developments with that. Um, uh, I'm Jamie. I'm Jamie Fitzwater. I'm here. Uh, rep I know it shows on Kendall Salter, but I'm representing Morgan Smith. I'm his mother. And there was paperwork sent over that I would be speaking because he's got a two year old that jumped out of a hammock and has a broken leg. So mm -hmm. I'm here today. Okay. Um, it's apparently since sorry. the last. I'm sorry, Mr. German. I hate to yeah. interrupt. Um, minutes. Did, did the minutes get sent to board members? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oops, forgot about that. Okay. Um, we can. Uh, I didn't make see anything. You didn't? I move we approve these DA minutes for the July 2nd, 2020 meeting. Second. I'm sorry, who was? Ty. Okay, thank you. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The July 2nd meeting minutes are passed. Okay. Um, back to the first case in old business. Um, that uh, situation has changed since the last meeting. Staff has been working on that and realized that the adjacent lot that is also owned by Mr. Smith is not large enough to be a lot in the NPD district, which by zoning law means the two lots are combined into one zoning lot, which fixes the problem of Mr. Smith needing a variance. Well, uh, excuse me, I, I did have a couple of questions. Um, I just, is it time for me to talk? Let me um, just check with um, Ms. Williams real quick to make sure I didn't miss anything or mess anything up with that explanation. Um, no, that, that was a pretty quick and brief explanation. Um, as more questions arise, if they do, then we can dig further into this. That's what I think. Okay, Ms. Fitzwater, you can go ahead and, well. Okay, okay, great. I guess we can. Okay, we just, um, I've reached out to share you and uh, spoke with Billy once over the last couple of weeks. I've been trying to, to get some guidance on where we need to go. But I just received, or he and I just received at 4.15 tonight, um, an explanation. So I haven't been able, I, I work, so I haven't been able to dig into this to find out what else is going on. But a couple of things that came about was, uh, and I just needed to kind of, figure out what we're doing here. Um, the property beside him, there was something that was brought up about the fact of 
he owns the property at um, uh, 1604. He sold that, so I don't know what that has to do with our question, but he sold that about two weeks ago. Yeah, and that was, we realized just today that, oh. but, but it really doesn't affect the, the lot at 1600 and um, 1554 as being considered zoning lots. It's, it's 1554 that's the non-conforming lot. Um, okay, can I, and so it was split prior to him and I buying it. Correct. Five years ago, it was split, I guess by Homewood, I guess they split it. But now, and now, like I said, Sherry I, and, and Brian, I haven't dug through all this yet. To, to see what's going on. So it was split a couple of years ago, maybe five, seven years ago, it was split by the previous owners. But now you're, you're telling us the only thing that we can do is put it back together? Uh, I, no, the, if that's not, no. If he wants to um, build on, onto the house to to extend um to expand and enclose this um current carport Foot ramp. yes ma'am yeah. then um variances are um a, a way for someone who has no other option to ask this board for assistance and to grant them leniency in this particular case, since both properties are owned by the same person, by the applicant, um, he has another way to grant himself relief. Also, when we were looking at the lots, um, and, and this happens a, a lot when people own two lots, you just kind of over time end up using two lots kind of as one um, the access drive from Beckham, for instance, is not actually on the on 1600. It's on the other lot. And then there's that um, large like parking pad turnaround area. That's on the adjacent lot. Also, in reviewing all of these things, um, you know, it it appears to staff that these two lots really uh, are used daily um, as if they were one. But that's, kind of, you know, our, just the way that we see this doesn't really matter. What the code says is that when there are two lots in common ownership and one lot does not meet um, the requirements in um, area or width, which happens to be the case for this particular lot at 1554, um, then those two lots together are considered essentially one lot. Um, See, that's, that's the thing we've got. We had put it on the market, but then he and I have discussed, <coughs> excuse me, my daughter lives across the street for him. They're twins uh -huh. across the street from each other. So that would be a good lot for me as I'm, you know, as I'm getting older, I could build a small home up there and be right there beside the kids. But now with y'all saying this, it's, it's like we wouldn't be able, to, I wouldn't be able to have my own lot. So he could build, he could, he could build a detached garage, a detached accessory structure with, with, um, that has an apartment in it. Um, those are allowed in the MPD district. There are, you know, if, if that is your biggest concern there, having these two lots would allow him to expand the footprint of the house and build a, a, another suite on the back. The, um, the main issue is that um, having the two lots and using them the way they are being used kind of as one lot, the, the zoning ordinance recognizes this as a, a single lot. I guess I'm wondering why would, why would y'all have split it a couple years ago? We didn't split it. The city doesn't. Oh, y'all don't. Mm -mm, oh. No, that would have been the, the, the previous property owner split it. Yes, um, and at that time, um, 
the city didn't have its own department, its own zoning and planning department. So, and um, there was a, um, a consultant actually who handled the, these things for the city. And um, so the, the calculation that is currently done for the MPD district was not something that, that was I done that by right. that consultant. Um, and it wasn't until, you know, originally your son had said, no, 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 I, you know, I don't want to resurvey. I, I want to go forward with the variance. And so we didn't even do the NPD calculation to see if this lot was conforming or non-conforming. And it wasn't until um, the board requested that he pursue um, another avenue of relief that um, our GIS specialist went ahead and did that calculation and, and determined that it was non-conforming in, in both area and lot width at minimum building line. Um, the, um, which, you know, is really kind of a good position to be in. It just means that, you, I mean, you can, he can still add on to the garage. He can st um, still enlarge it. He could have a place for you. It's just well, but as far as online. the carport, I'm sorry, the carport he has right now, there's no way to have the five foot variance in the back as we set as we are right now. Correct. Okay. Um, okay. Since I haven't had time to dig through this, and I still, like I said, I have reached out several weeks for guidance. So before I. Um, I know there is something else I probably need to do, but can I ask for a continuance until? Absolutely. He, if, is that if, okay? If Mr. Jarm, if Mr. Jarman is um, amenable to that request, that's entirely his call to make. I think, given the circumstances surrounding this, that would be a good idea, just to make sure everybody is on the on the same page and everybody okay. is fully informed about the entirety yeah. of the. Situation. And this is, yeah, it is kind of confusing. I think that that's a great, a great thing to do, and we can speak with everybody about it more. That would that would be that would be wonderful. I do appreciate it, and I do appreciate all the information that was sent. It was just sent. I didn't have time to, to step back, and, and Morgan's tied up tonight as well. Yeah, and I hate for him to not be a part of this conversation, um, since it is so completely different from his request. Um, Mr. Jarman, do you want to vote on a continuance or do you just want to continue it by acclamation? We just continue it by acclamation. I don't think we need to have a vote. Okay. Okay, so that will be continued and carried over until next month's meeting. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Okay, moving on to new business. Uh, case number one, uh, SV2008-01, which is 618 Weena Avenue. Is Mr. Allen available? I see his name on there. There yeah. he is. There he is. Hi. Can you see me now? Yes. 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 Hi. Sorry. I thought it was uh, controlled by the um, proctor. <clears throat> so can you just uh, state your name and address and the nature of your hardship, please? Uh, my name is Jeremy Allen, and um, the address for the hardship is 618 Weena Avenue. And the hardship is for, I'm requesting a variance for, um, to increase the rear impervious from um, the allowed 30% or 35% if it's part of it is semi-permeable to 49% and then um, rear yard accessory structures from 30% uh, or, or rather 35% if you're allowed again to 70% or 400 feet and 867 feet. Okay. Um, 
Uh, just quickly, Ms. Williams, he mentioned 400 feet for a variance for the lot, rear lot coverage, I guess. Based on the, yeah, based on the, what the code allows for 30% of rear yard accessory structures and uses. Uh -huh. um, accessory structures and uses um, are anything that um, the swimming pool, the detached um, garage, carport, the driveway, the pool decking, all of those things are a part of this 30% um, maximum percentage. Um, based on the square footage of his rear yard, 30% would allow him to have 643 square feet of accessory uses and structures. Um, based on the plan that Mr. Allen has provided us, um, he, is, he would like 1,510 square feet of accessory uses and structures which is 70% rear yard coverage versus the 30% rear yard coverage. The overall um, impervious area will not come into play because we are only talking about the rear yard structures that he is requesting. Okay, I've just got two pages of like one is for the rear yard accessory structure and one is just lot coverage. Total um, lot coverage I'm supposed to be within compliance. I'm at like 33% for total lot coverage, but the way it was explained to me and the way the law was is that there's impervious and then there's total accessory structure. So my impervious is going from 30 to 49% and then my total rear yard accessory structures and it's in there as two separate, under the 30% it reads there's two separate um, items okay so on the so that's why second, I on my side is two things right so okay I but just you mentioned, the 70 percent catch captures yeah i just thought you said 400 feet and on the sheet of paper it says 281 um that that was hmm. the way it was originally calculated without the pool deck included i think okay. if you look at yeah if you look at, yeah the staff report um on page three it kind of shows a layout of what was being requested and that should be the the most up-to-date figures and numbers that we had for the structures um the and on the first page of staff's review worksheet under specific request it kind of lays out the square footage that is allowed of the 30% square footage for the rear yard would be 643 square feet. And the request is for 1,510 square feet, which is 70% of 70% rear yard coverage. So I guess technically the, the variance request would be for a 40% increase. Or 867 square feet. 867 Correct. additional square feet yeah. for a total of 1510. Okay. Well, I was going to add that up, but I believe you. Um, <laughs> those, those are actually your numbers that I calculated. Believe my calculator. Don't believe me. <laughs> well, okay. Miss, Miss Sherry, those are your numbers that I put into my narrative. <laughs> so I hope okay. they're funny. Um, all right, he's allowed 643. He's asking for 1510, so that's 867. Yay. An 867 square foot increase. Or 70% luck, uh, rear bridge. You're on mute, Brian. Thanks, Ty. Um, if there's nothing more from Mr. Allen, I will open up the public portion. This is a public hearing. Anyone would like to is, speak about this? 
I was going to say, I have a, I have a prepared statement. Do I do that after the public part? No, you need to present that now. Okay, cool. Um, hey, thank you, I guess, for allowing me to um, approach the board with this request. Um, with y'all's permission, my family would essentially build a rear parking structure in the rear corner of our lot, uh, providing a low slung open air carport that would work in concert with a, a pool to provide a off street parking, two off street parking places uh, for, I have a total of three drivers and we'll have four drivers very soon. Um, I guess that is a self-inflicted hardship, um, but we would be moving it to the back corner. So kind of a snapshot is uh, this keeps a, a the lot is much wider than the house I owned on Woodland. It has a 20 foot wide side lot that goes from the very front to the very back. Um, it would allow us to pour a lot less driveway in the back and it would enjoy, allow us to enjoy the full potential of the lot. So um, we're requesting the two variances. When we purchased 618 Wiener, uh, we set out to build a home for our family, um, which met the needs of our growing family. My, I have two high school daughters and I have a son who's in middle school. Um, we had a couple of things that were, that were really important to us in the process. One, it's the 1930s Craftsman Bungalow. We've lived in two others. I grew up uh, remodeling homes with my dad. It is important to me to keep that Craftsman style. Um, we've, we met with engineer, surveyor, designer, architect. And the big thing was I wanted, when you walk by the house at Halloween, I, I want it to look like a home that, that really hasn't had anything done to it. And so if you look at the um, front elevations, we're adding an A-frame with shed dormers, keeping everything very low, keeping the weight of the house down, um, not trying to build a, a cruise ship like I've lived in the past. Um, and then in, in doing this, we have some other needs. Our son is autistic. He um, does PT and OT. We had a, a pool at our previous home and it was very important to us when we transitioned to a new home to provide that for him as well. Um, these benefits, you know, physically and socially from time in the water, especially with COVID, it's been a really hard uh, transition on us as we're in a rental now and the pool has been closed. Um, again, a, another thing for us with the home was that the house was, it, it said 1200 feet. It didn't really live like that. The front uh, living room was eight by 10 or eight by 12 because four feet of that was the entrance. Uh, we have five almost adults, so we needed a living area. So uh, in looking at keeping the historical lines of the house and trying to make it historically appropriate um, between our designer and engineer and everyone, it was to go back with the house made the most sense. So we added the rear keeping space. Um, this, again, it protected that side yard, which is really great. It, it, it really makes the lot feel nice and open and airy. It gives a lot of green space. But, it, you know, if we follow the letter of the law, if we attach structure to the back of the house, um, that was big. Um, if, if we follow the letter of the law, we end up with a 500 square foot driveway in the back to try to attach to the house. Um, so that puts us in a bit of a bind. Um, so we wanted to, to use the lot in a way that was, was the most creative and allowed a continuous of the most green space available. Um, again, if, if we were to take the, the 15 feet of, you know, if you go from the Wena Avenue back to where our property legally starts on the survey and you add that space in there, when you add up our total impervious space, we're actually right at less than 30% of the total lot coverage. Um, but we do have more coverage in the rear. So I don't want to downplay that, but I do think it's important. And, and the engineer and surveyors all really stress that to me is that, you know, these things are important because we're trying to protect rainwater and stormwater as we have a storm coming now. My house here uh, that I'm renting um, right behind Dawson flooded the first week we were in it. So I'm very aware of groundwater and how it affects the world. Um, two, we wanted, we have to do two off street parking places. And if you've been on Wena, it is a playground. It should be called Wena Playground, not Wena Avenue. And, you know, our house is in the very middle and it has the flat lot. And so everyone ends up on that. So we were, I mean, I think to be good neighbors, putting the parking in the rear is the most logical and most ideal use of the space and use of the property. Um, again, if we were to follow the rules of a 20 foot setback in the rear, we're talking a 450 to 500 square foot parking pad, uh, driveway to get to the garage. Um, but allowing it to be a detached structure, we're able to push it back into that corner and only, and only be off five to seven feet. We've got about two feet from the edge of the alley itself 
to the beginning of our plot line. And then if we do a five foot driveway, then we really are, you know, using the least amount of green space uh, to provide the structure. Another option when we were looking at being over 30% and trying to say, hey, can we get around this and not have to apply for variances was to incorporate the pool into the home. Uh, we had someone, you know, sketch it out, architect sketched it out. It's like, hey, make it part of the house. And we're like, whoa, man, all of a sudden now we, we've got like 3,000 something square feet, 4,000 square feet of quote unquote downstairs house. Yeah, it's in the property lines and yeah, it meets the 20 foot setbacks and the 10 foot setbacks. But it's, you know, using almost 40, it was like 46 or 47% of the total lot coverage. And I'm like, you know what, that doesn't go with the letter of the law. That doesn't go with the spirit of what I think, you know, the ordinance is trying to achieve. So we left it as is. And so um, we're asking with your permission uh, for our family to be able to build a, you know, low slung open air carport that's five feet back and five feet from the side and then allow us to protect the elevations of the house, not have to bump into the side yard, not have to destroy the front character of the house, um, you know, pour less driveway, less poured concrete. You know, our, our pool patio at our other home was fire rock pavers on a sand base. It's semi-permeable. Um, we plan to, you know, reproduce that here and we put as much grass in our backyard as we could before. And we plan to do that again here. Um, and so, you know, keeping the carport a carport and not a garage, uh, we're, I think we're a foot and a half below the minimum, the maximum height requirement. Um, you know, if, if you've seen, you know, you drive by 400 Woodland where we lived before and see the structure that we built on that home before, I think it really adds to the character of the neighborhood. I know the kids are excited about having a pool. Um, so I ask your permission and for you guys to consider it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is a public hearing. If anyone would like to speak to this case, they may do so at this time. We have had nobody put, we've had nobody put their name in the chat for this. Uh, maybe somebody who's called in, but nobody's put their name in the chat to speak. Um, there was one email that was forwarded. Um, yes. Yesterday afternoon late from um, Fred, Fred forwarded it um, to y'all. One email came in um, through the city's website. Did everyone get that? Yeah. Yes. See if I can find it. Okay. Well, if there are no public comments, we will close the public portion and open up to questions from the board. If I remember right, the question from the person that sent in was about the alley and was there enough yeah. turn in? Yeah, you want me to read that? that? Yeah, why don't you read that? Okay. So this is an email from your rear neighbor across the alley. Uh, it uh, says, my property is across the alley from the back of the Wiener property. The plans look nice. Respectfully, my only concern is that the width of the space des designated for the carport probably doesn't allow for an adequate turn radius to get the vehicles in and out of the carport. Since the alley is not very wide, the carport is perpendicular to the alley. The carport is not <coughs> set back very far from the alley. There is a power pole directly across the alley from the carport and that portion of my property beside beyond the power pole is fenced. We had this exact issue with a prior owner at another home on the alley, which had a similar carport, also perpendicular to the alley. Um, it goes on a little farther, but that's basically the gist of it. Uh, my chance to address the concern? Sure, absolutely. Uh, both of my cars are under 15 feet. Uh, it, the turn radius on a minivan uh, would easily be able to nose into it. Uh, our home on Wiener, I mean, our home on Woodland, we had a side entry garage that had a four foot uh, angled elevated driveway. We back in. So there's not going to be any pulling into the carport or garage. We, we back into garage spaces um, and pull out. So, uh, you know, that's five feet plus two feet and then the nine feet to 10 feet. So that's, you know, 17 feet. So that's, that's more than adequate for backing into a spot. 
that's how I taught my 16 year old how to drive was backing into the garage in an expedition. Uh, with this carport, I'm assuming there's no column in the middle. Is that right? I don't have a drawing of it. So no, sir, there'll be a, um, it'll be completely open. So we're running a, a beam through there. Right. So I, I agree that with an open carport, there's no garage doors and, and the fact you have the seven feet with an opening all the way across, I don't, I don't see that being an issue as well with a nine to 10 foot alley. Thank you. And I think it's actually uh, a question. The uh, questions I have is, you know, the, I think you said this in your, your um, kind of what you're talking about, which I agree with is uh, this whole reason that we have this type of rule. It's about, you know, runoff. Don't want storm runoff, letting other people. Well, one of the things is the pool and it's just the water going into water. So that's not going to have run off. I'm assuming your pool drains when you drain it, where's it go? Uh, that'll be to be decided. Um, I, I would be my pool guy. So, um, I'm assuming by code, you can't, you're not allowed to, you know, you're not allowed to drain it to the surface. So you'll be draining, whether it's to the storm or the sanitary, whatever the appropriate code is. Yes, sir. The, the, so sewer any, runs any, any the water, the, I'm sorry. Yeah. If any water fall, uh, rains into the pool, if it gets to the overflow, it just goes into the system. So it's not run off to the adjacent yes, property owners. The pave, you said it was pavers with a sand bed, which is, you know, the sand bed will also absorb not a hundred percent of the water, but a lot of that water as well uh, yes, from sir. that standpoint. So, um, you know, a chunk of this that's being asked for is not contributing to runoff the way I see it to any adjacent neighbors or anything. It's just a carport with the roof that's open uh, at this point. So, um, you know, the, the spirit of the rule is if they filled that all up with um, pervious materials that, that was complete runoff on that whole thing, that would be a disaster. But in this condition, it's a, the, you know, I'd say over half of it isn't runoff material because it's going into a pool and going into the sand beds at that point. My Mr. Jarman, may I speak? Yes, ma'am. Um, there are two different um, codes. One code is about the amount of, of impervious area. Um, and then there's the other one about the coverage of a rear yard with accessory structures and uses. Um, and that has nothing to do necessarily with the impervious area um, calculation. The 40% is, counts the entire pool because the pool itself is a use. And so the entire area of the pool is considered when calculating the amount of accessory structure and use. Um, so we would count even the hole. And we're not counting just the donut, we're counting the donut hole. So 450 feet um, of the swimming pool is considered in that calculation of the 30% rear yard um, coverage of the accessory uses and structures. The, um, this, he is not, this is not a request to increase the overall impervious area necessarily. It's the uses and structures, which is a different code section. I would ask what the spirit of that section is and what the purpose of of limiting accessory structures would be. And I would, you know, I would, I would say as a neighbor and as a friend and as someone who's lived in Homewood for almost 10 years, I think it's to prevent people from building garage mahals in their backyard. And, right. you know, so I, I think the way mine is drawn, you know, I, I'm, I have to live there um, and I have to enjoy the home and I have to be a neighbor. And so I think as it's drawn, I, I think, the spirit of, of the ordinance and the spirit of the law, I think I've met that. I mean, I would hope I would. Um, so 
you know, in keeping, keeping everything in line with the front elevation of the home, that's why I'm, that's why I've gone to the expense of, of doing structural repairs on the house rather than just tearing the thing down was to be, a, you know, to keep the integrity of the home and the integrity of the community. And so I, I think, you know, building a 14 foot, you know, low slung open air carport is, is to the, to the, you know, spirit of limiting accessory structures. And so I hope you guys would, would agree with that. Um, my question is not about the carport because obviously a two car carport has to accommodate two cars. So you're kind of bound by what that dimension would be. Yes, Mine is about the size of the pool. Yes, ma'am. Did you look at other options? Did you look at turning it differently to get, you know, can we shrink that down some? Um, we had, my son is going to probably be over six feet tall. Um, when you, when you put him in a, a 15 by 30 pool, it's fine. But if you put him and two friends in there, it's tight. Um, we had our, our previous pool had a 12 foot by 12 foot deep diving area and then a reg and 15 by 17, um, regular swimming area. And I can send you pictures, you know, you put two floats and three kids in there that are going to be high school kids. And it's pretty tight. Um, so, to 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 get under thirty percent, we're talking about a hundred square foot pool. Uh, because I don't we're necessarily mean under. I don't necessarily mean to get under that, but oh, make I see some adjustment. Make some. Um, that actually, you know, to believe it's actually is adjusted uh, smaller than what we had originally wanted. Um, our the guy who does our pools for the, for you know x amount of money you get a, a certain amount of steel and shotcrete mm -hmm. or gunite and that's up to 17 feet wide and 38 feet long and so we're actually you know going to be spending more on the base structure than what we could actually get for the money so it you know i it is actually a little shrunk and we were going to run it right into the pool. We could run it right into the carport and do like fountains off the carport. We looked at all of that, but I said, you know, we're, we're worried about covering structure here. So, yes, ma'am. I mean, we looked at shrinking the rear room, but when you're trying to look at percentages, you know, I would have to, I would have to increase, you know, to try to get from 70 to even 50%. I mean, you're talking to get 200 feet of accessory structure, you've got to have 900 feet of how, of yard because it's a percentage. It's not a, uh, you know, apples for apples. I can't take 300 feet off the house to get 300 feet in the backyard. That's what makes it really kind of complicated to make the accommodations. But at the same time, I totally understand, you know, I understand why the ordinance exists. I, I live in the neighborhood, I run in the neighborhood, I go through the alleys and I see, wow, this is why in 2018 this was passed. We have any more questions for Mr. Allen? So, I just want to make sure I have my numbers right in my head. And Ms. Williams, you need to help me. Hold on, my, okay. my, dog, my dog is whining to get outside. Hold on a second. Oh. Just, sorry. <laughs> I don't want an accident. Just a moment. Sorry, I'll, okay. I still apologize. Actually, Jackson, come let Amos out, please, son. Okay. So okay, the, re the request, the if we take out the pool, I mean, if we I'm trying to think, think about how exactly to answer this, ask this question. And start with you got three very large structures in your backyard. Right. I mean, <laughs> they're just. I'm just. 
<laughs> so I'm trying to work backwards. What is this? Okay, I got it in my mind now. Okay, I figured it out. I'm sorry, did you need me to, to, oh, I, I, you've got it in your head now? I you're got good? it sorted out. Yes. Okay, okay. I just had to stare at it for a while. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody okay? I move we approve case SB 20 08 01. I'll second. Mr. Cole? Yes. Okay. Figure out who's not here. Um, you know, Bowie Roberts. Okay. Um, Miss Smith. Yes. Miss LaBeouf. Yes. 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 Mr. Cole. Yes. Mr. Jarman? No. Mr. Gear? No. Uh, okay, that's a three to two vote, so your various request does not pass. Is there any room for appeal or to uh, modify the request or? get guidance from the board, please, or have those who voted no give me some insight. Your appeal would be to circuit court, um, if that's what you chose to do, all appeals to um, from the decision of the zoning board, um, because this board is quasi-judicial, your appeal would go to the circuit court, and any proffer would have been um, before a motion was made. Okay. Well, I guess your other option, I mean, you can always revi revise, and if you still come up with a variance need, you can always submit a new request. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, next case is SV20-0802. It's 812 Salter Road, Homewood. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for your time this evening. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Vandalism. I'm sorry, my name is Joey Tabisco. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Vandalism Gunter to request a three foot variance to the front of their uh, house at 812 Salter Road. Um, hey, would you, I'm sorry, would you state your address for the record, please? Uh, yeah, my address is 3660 Crestside Road, Birmingham, Alabama, 35223. Great, thank you. Um, I don't know, is it okay to share my screen uh, so that uh, for the for the presentation, or do you have? I can. Let me give me give me just a second, and I'll give you control. Hang on, just a second. Okay. Okay, you should be able to share your screen now. Again, so uh, we're requesting a three foot variance to the front of the existing house. Um, I'm guessing everybody's familiar with the area, but just kind of to orient you to our site. Uh, again, 812 Salter Road, 
Uh, you got Dean Marcos over here. Um, you have a uh, new residential development up here, along with three new construction uh, residential construction sites here as well. There's some renovation along the street and a uh, couple of new houses or a few houses on this island as well, new construction within the past six or seven years. Uh, so obviously there's this push for, uh, for renovation and home improvement uh, within this area. Uh, and we'd just like to be a part of this uh, with our renovation. Uh, currently the scope that we're proposing as part of the renovation is we're trying to restore the uh, house to its original character. So we're removing all the vinyl siding, restoring all the original pine lap siding underneath and removing the vinyl soffits and fascias and exposing the rafter tails. And, uh, just, again, just re restoring it to its original character. Um, also included as part of the scope of the renovation is the addition of a fireplace within the main living area. Unfortunately, just due to the narrow width of our site uh, and the property, we're not able to, get, to build this fireplace onto the side of the house to where it enters the, the main living space. Uh, and the main living space is actually a shared space and dining room, uh, just towards the back of the space. I can see this bit. Uh, so this actually portion here is, is the dining area. So you can't really put the fireplace to the to the back of the room. Really, the only feasible location to locate the fireplace is towards the front of the house. Um, and so, you know, when constructing this fireplace, it takes up a good portion of the space, making the the space infeasible. Uh, just just really kills the space. And so we're requesting a three foot variance to help alleviate that. Um, you know, also there's a strong language of, of front porches throughout that, that whole street. All the houses have front porches and we just really want to continue that as well. So pushing that fireplace to the exterior uh, would basically kill the front porch. You have a stoop left, but again, it wouldn't have maintained the character that goes with the street. And we're just really trying to maintain that, do it right. Um, and again, it's, it's a three foot variance. We're not requesting uh, the, a, a 50 foot anomaly that's gonna stick out like, like a sore thumb. We're really trying to, really just trying to do this right as well as make, uh, build this fireplace as well for our clients. So uh, appreciate your time, your consideration. Um, just if you have any questions, I'm, I'm here for you. Okay, thank you. Um, this is a public hearing. If there is anyone from the public in the queue that would like to speak to this case, they may do so at this time. Hey everybody, um, this is Ashley McCullers. I am a neighbor of Liz and Van. We um, live at 808, so we are three houses down um, from Liz and Van. And we are kind of where the new houses on Short Salter begin. And then to the right of us in the direction of Liz and Van are all of the homes that have um, kept original integrity and character. And we are just here to support what Joey and uh, Ketchum is hoping to do for Liz and Van. You know, they're not, not asking a whole lot. And I know that maintaining the original look of the house and kind of restoring it is of um, great importance to them. So while we kind of went on the opposite end, we are here to support them and hope that you guys will make these accommodations and allow for them to add on a little bit to their house. All right. Thank you, Ms. McCullers. Do, do we have anyone else from the public that would like to speak to this case? Hey, this is Rob McDavid. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Um, so we just wanted to to also throw our support behind Van and Liz. Um, you know, we've got we've got a, a and by the way, we're at a eight one four Salter. So we're the the neighbors directly to the the left of the the Gunters. Um, but uh, you know, we we recently went through a an exterior renovation of our own. Um, and we've been talking to 
to Van and Liz to make sure, you know, the things that we're doing to our house also line up and, and keep the character of the neighborhood and kind of restore it back to what it originally was. And and their renovation is really in line with ours to try to to try to restore, you know, their house to, to how how it was originally, as as Joey mentioned. And the the three foot variance, um, you know, to us it is not really a big deal at all. We're on really big lots. I think we've got like a hundred and 10 feet in the in the front yard or so to the street um and if it if if that variance was going to impact anybody um or, or have substantial impact to to any of the houses it would probably most greatly impact us and you know it, it's such a small variance it, it's not going to have any any kind of impact on us and we're we're completely okay with it and, and in favor of the uh in favor of them being able to move forward Okay, great. Thank you for your input. All right, is there in, any other public comment? Hey guys, it's Jeffrey Ketchum. Uh, just speaking a little bit to it as well. Um, the road is, it does, it has really deep lots, big lots, everything sticks a good ways away from from the street. It's also not really uniform in that the houses are at different, uh, I guess, distances there to uh, Salter. So I don't think this is going to mess up any of, of, you know, aesthetic as far as houses as we like to have them lined up. Uh, and I do think it'll bring a good bit as far as being able to hang out on the front porch and, and be around neighbors. And then as far as the usage, we looked at different places to put the fireplace. And I do think that Joey's done a good job of kind of coming up with this, what's going to be the best solution uh, based off of what this room can handle. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in there and uh, would be happy to answer any other questions that y'all may have as far as the build out goes. I'm going to pass on the, you know, well, pitch in on some design questions if, if, if asked, but uh, just wanted to say here too, if I can help out with any of that, I'm, I'm glad to do that. Okay. Did you, State your address for the record, Jeffrey. Uh, sorry. Uh, 801 Forest, Homewood 35209. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Right. Any further public comment? Okay, I uh, will assume that was the last bit of public comment. We will close the public <laughs> portion and open up to questions from the board. Just a just a quick question for me. The the 5411, does that start at the roof line or stairwell of the front porch? Starts at the stairwell. Uh, stairwell. Sorry, it starts with the, the covered portion. Um, covered portion. All right. Let's see. Gotcha. Okay. We just have a few stairs sticking out from that is all. Okay. I said now. Okay. There's no questions for me, Brian. I didn't think so, Ty. Hi. Okay. Um, is that everything? I move we approve the VA case SV 20 08 02. I'll second. 